device, uh, an application that allows you to sync and to instantaneously discover and buy uh, something that, that, that you like. It's as stupid as that. Uh, but it's pretty complicated when it comes to uh, technology and business too. So now we started this in Tunisia and hopefully we're moving soon to the United States. Uh, now we're in talks with the studios and product placement companies and and things are, are going um, pretty well. Okay, yeah. So we think that it's not just an application that allows you to discover and revise that. So uh, my vision was to, uh, by unlocking information, you would dramatically increase the number of product placements that you can do in, uh, in a movie. So like Red Bull, Red Bull is here and uh, they, they put their stuff so you can see it. Um, that was an interruption. It's like the, the commercial that that, uh, uh, that you see on, on TVs. And we think that commercials are irrelevant uh, to you, at least most of them. They are annoying. So uh, we would like to invert the tendency. You would go to something that you uh, are interested in. Um, it has also important financial uh, implications for uh, content makers and uh, it allows them also to uh, make money on, on pirated content that I'm sure that all of you uh, buy the movie at one dinner. But that's how we, we uh, give money back to producers who are starving. Um, okay, so other yeah, so why am I here? Um, not just here to talk about what I do, but I wanted also to share some intuitions that I have, uh, hopefully trigger reflection and uh, take risks. That's what I do as an entrepreneur. So um, I, I founded a, a technology company without knowing too much about company, without knowing too much about technology, and not a great public speaker. But yet I'm here, so uh, I'm going to talk about a few things that I'm sure that you are interested in. So, um, artificial intelligence. So that's a big topic, very exciting. Uh, lots of new stuff coming, so IBM and, and all that. Um, but I think that you can really have artificial intelligence without understanding natural stupidity. That's the first thing that you should do if you want to have uh, machines uh, really figuring out what people want to do. So um, I myself uh, dropped out from medicine school and started uh, uh, studying economics, marketing, and, and uh, management. And um, I loved economics, but I hated studying economics. I mean, uh, what the economists do, they try to put mathematical models uh, and try to figure out how people behave and think. But um, we're not there yet. I mean, most of what has been done theoretically and, and all the financial, uh, all the uh, technical stuff that was built uh, to have financial institu institutions figure out how the market works, that's really, uh, um, it doesn't work. So, um, but econ economics allows you to understand where we are in terms of understanding human, because it's maybe the only discipline that um, that tries to mathematize how we think. And I still think that economists are pretty dumb when it comes to uh, uh, figuring out the model of that. And that's what happens when they make politicians. Can we run the video, please? Thank you. Well, that's an economist and a politician. Yeah, so that, that, that's what I think. Okay, so, but you are um, techies and you uh, think that you're more clever than, than economists. 
and um, I'm going to show you the testimony of a. And I love the service on the line. And you write to me and say, having bought this biography of John Major, you may be interested also in Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> So these guys are, are uh, these guys are from Amazon, and uh, the other guy was making fun of them, but they were talking about taxes. But anyway, it's just to make a point that, that we're not we're not there yet. Uh, so the, I have been uh, interested in a few problems, and I suggested some solutions, but unsuccessfully. But today we start seeing um, the same attempts in the in that field, and I want to share that with you. I'm not. Uh, here to give you an answer, or um, or I, I would maybe be happy if one of you uh, could be interested in, in, in these problems. Uh, and I mean, it, my talk is not scientific; it's it's just um, an idea and a strong strong intuition. And I think that one of you at least should should uh, maybe play with it. So um, one of the problems in economics. One of the problems in economics, so let's say that you, oops, sorry. No, yeah. So let's say that you're going to buy a car. And I will tell you that uh, you can buy a car here from Gazela at $20,000. But if you go to Marsa, you're going to find the same car at $100 less. You're going to say, I mean, these are uh, uh, experiments that were done, so you can, you can check that. Uh, and that, that were gave also by, by uh, Professor Gilbert on a TED talk. Uh, so when, when you tell people that uh, they can save $100, they say, no, I mean, why go to Marsa? It's $100. But if, if you're going to buy a Wii, uh, and I tell you that in Gazeta it's $200 uh, dollars or dinars for um, go to Marsa for 100 um, dinars less, you're going to go to Marsa because uh, it's 50 times, 50% 50, 50 uh, um, uh, cheaper. But, but the thing is that these uh, uh, 100 dinars is 100 dinars, but yet it doesn't, uh, to your brain, it's not, uh, it's not the same. And that's a problem for uh, economists. So they, they uh, escape these problems. They assume that you're going to uh, have the same behavior. Uh, another problem is, so if you take a product at 1,000, that drops at 1,000 dinars, let's say, or 1 dinar, that drops at 800, you're going to have a demand A. You take the same product uh, that starts from 1,000, that goes down to uh, 500 and gets back to 800, you're going to have a different demand. But 800 is 800. And economists do not think about that. So your brain is, uh, thinks, it's, it's, it's path dependent. So uh, uh, it's, not, it's not just the absolute uh, value here. So, um, Another big problem is also reflexivity. Reflexivity is about perception and action. So you perceive something and you're going to uh, take a decision and then change that thing and you're going to have another perception about it that will drive another action. So uh, there's a feedback loop that, uh, that is going, constantly going on and this problem has been excluded also from economics. And it's uh, a phenomenon that you can clearly see in, in, in markets. Um, okay, loss aversion also is a big problem. Uh, loss aversion was introduced by Spensky and Kahneman, who, uh, it wasn't introduced by them actually, it was uh, formalized by them. And it's about the asymmetry about uh, between uh, loss and, and gain. So you would be um, more more unhappy to lose than happy to win the same thing. So there's an asymmetry. It's not like uh, 
in, uh, in the mathematics, in, in, in mathematics where you have uh, absolute number. Um, and marginal utility is at the base of economic thinking, which, which is uh, like the first piece of chocolate gives you less pleasure than the second piece of chocolate, the third piece of chocolate gives you less, uh, and it's, it's decreasing like that. So these problems look like they are independent, but my idea was that uh, with general, with the theory of general relativity, you can you can um, reduce all these problems. So um, by using this geometry, you would solve the problem of reflexivity, where you have matter that distorts space-time distortion of, of your your perception, that would change, uh, uh, and the, the distortion of space-time changes. Tells the uh, matter how to how to move. So there's a, a reflexive dynamic uh, between space, space time, and uh, and, and mass. Uh, uh, same thing for um, uh, the marginal utility. It's the same dynamic. Um, with geometry, you can solve the, the other problems. I don't have too much time to go into details, but I would love that one of you uh, at least. Uh, looks at these guys. So this guy, this guy uh, is working on the Einsteinian um, approach, and these guys are working on the silency and consumer choice. So that's basically they reduce uh, your decision making uh, to uh, your brain assigning weight to uh, different attributes in a different way. Uh, and maybe, maybe if we can figure out a new framework uh, for thinking of the human mind and the human behavior, we could have a more intelligent artificial intelligence. Uh, I also have a few speculations about uh, how technology could evolve. Uh, I think the next disruption will be about uh, computing. Uh, I'm not a developer, I don't understand what you guys do, but uh, I would love to see in the future building blocks where I could uh, draw an architecture and um, do my own stuff. I know that there's some some startups that are doing this, but I'm I'm, I'm seeing that more in a uh, a bigger framework, a bigger environment that would be uh, sorry that would be based on a Bitcoin-like platform, and that could uh, have tremendous change on, on the intellectual property model. So let's say that you invented something and I took it and I'm going to integrate it in a product and I would have my company also uh, on the cloud. I'm talking about the legal structure here, not just uh, your software running, uh, running on the cloud and you could have you could easily integrate uh, monetization dimension in internet, but I mean these are ideas that that are a bit far from, from here today. But uh, monetization wasn't wasn't uh, really considered when when people invented the internet, and that's what we're trying to uh, to do with with, uh, with content, video content. So uh, you could also think of, uh, you know, I interact a lot with engineers and I truly think that computing still sucks and it's very engineered, so I'm not, I'm not very comfortable with it, but uh, I would love to see, I don't know, uh, uh, information with physical properties. I want to open my computer and uh, see stuff emerging from from, uh, uh, from what we, we did uh, the, the day before. So you, you could even think of uh, features that would emerge from, um, from uh, this uh, living physical, living data that has physical properties. Um, I have a few, two minutes and two a piece of device, maybe for you, you can take it or leave it as you chose. 
but uh, okay, there's this common idea you have to focus like this. Uh, I think that you shouldn't focus like this. I think that you should focus like this. You have a fixed point, and you have to look at different fields and uh, talk to different people who are doing things that are radically different. And uh, I'm not going to tell you about the future because I don't know what, what's going to happen, but I know that most of people have this, uh, this problem of confusing the future with what they see in the review mirror. And uh, that, that really captures, I think, what, what the people uh, um, who tell you that's not possible or that's not how it's done uh, think and how they perceive Thanks. Thank you very much.